Welcome and hello everyone. My name is Gordon Feener and I am an attorney located in Boston, Massachusetts with a satellite office in Stoneham, Mass. During the course of this informational segment, I'd like to focus on the various sections contained within the sworn statement in proof of loss in connection with homeowner insurance coverage and claims. This segment is in a series of segments concerning the sworn statement in proof of loss. If you have not already listened or viewed my first segment in this series, I'd invite you to do so uh, prior to continuing to listen to this segment. Before I begin discussing the subject matter of this informational segment, I'd like to briefly summarize my background. I have been in business as an attorney for more than 30 years, providing legal services with a concentration in homeowner and or property related insurance claims. Prior to starting this office, I worked for approximately 20 years in the insurance claims industry. This segment will focus on the various sections contained within a document generally referred to as a proof of loss or sworn statement and proof of loss. On the easel next to me is a standard form of a sworn statement and proof of loss with a subrogation agreement that is generally used by many insurance companies. There are various versions of this document but I suggest that generally all require the same or similar information. I have identified for you nine areas for you to pay special attention to during your review of any proof of loss that you may be asked to sign. These areas have been identified for informational purposes only and not as legal advice. I suggest that a lot of the information requested on the form can be found on the declaration page of your homeowner insurance policy. In the area that I've identified as number one, you are being asked to provide information concerning the amount of the policy at the time of the loss and to provide information as to when the policy was issued and when it is scheduled to expire. In the area identified with number two, the company is asking for you to provide the insurance policy number, the insurance company claim file number, and the name of your insurance agent, if any. In the area identified by three, the insurance company is requesting for you to name the insurance company. It also asks for your name as it appears on the policy and the type of loss that occurred. In area number four, it asks for you, the homeowner, to put in writing the time and date for the origin of your loss. Care needs to be taken to make sure that the information concerning the origin of the loss is accurate, as inaccurate information may provide a separate basis for denial of your claim. In the area identified as number five, the insurance company is asking for you to provide information concerning the occupancy of the building at the time of the loss, along with the name of any a mortgagee or lien holder. The area identified in number six inquires as to whether there have been any changes or material changes in the occupancy, possession, or the use of the property since the insurance policy went into effect. The area identified with the number seven inquires as to the total amount of insurance that was in effect at the time of the loss. The company is also asking for you to set forth the full replacement cost of your damage along with the actual cash value of your damage. If this amount is based on a public insurance adjuster's or contractor's estimate, you may wish to consider attaching a copy of that estimate and making a note that you're attaching that estimate. The insurance company is also asking for you to indicate the amount of your deductible and the amount that you are claiming under the insurance policy. Special attention should be paid to the area that I've identified with number eight, as it is placing you on notice of two different issues. 
The first issue is whether or not you did anything to cause the loss. And it's further asking whether you may have saved any of the damaged property or whether or not you have concealed any of the property in an attempt to deceive the insurance company. Also in this area is a notice that signing the proof of loss, you are assigning over or giving over to the insurance company all rights of recovery once they make a payment to you. I suggest that one of the most important parts of this uh, document is the statement that I've identified with the item number nine, indicating that this statement is made under the pains and penalty of perjury. In Massachusetts, it can be a crime to willfully lie while under oath or while making an affirmation as called for by this document. It also asks for the document to be notarized a witness depending upon the request of the insurance company. If you do not understand the form, do not complete or sign the form until all of your questions have been answered to your satisfaction. In general terms, the sworn statement of proof of loss needs to be submitted within 60 days from the date that the insurance company makes a formal request for it. Your failure to submit a sworn statement and proof of loss when it is requested by the insurance company can result in the denial of your otherwise covered claim and result with no payment for your damages. Caution needs to be given in filing any sworn statement in proof of loss as any material errors or inaccuracies or misrepresentations on the facts are grounds or a basis for the insurance company to deny your property damage claim. If your claim is significantly large and or complicated, the insurance company may scrutinize or look very carefully for any irregularities in this document in order to provide them with an additional basis to deny coverage for your otherwise covered claim. You should also be aware that generally a sworn statement and proof of loss is not automatically required when you file a homeowner insurance claim. If you have suffered a loss and need assistance with your homeowner insurance claim, please do not hesitate to contact the Law Office of Gordon Feener. For additional information, you may wish to visit our websites at www.attorneyfeener.com or www.homeownerclaims.com. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for watching this segment and remind you that this segment can be considered to be advertising under the ethical rules. Any selection of an attorney should be a careful and thoughtful decision. Again, thank you for watching this video. I invite you to watch my other videos concerning the sworn statement and proof of loss along with my videos concerning the declaration pages of your insurance policy. Thank you, have a good day, and stay safe.